Welcome to Teen Talk. Today's Teen Talk is all about art. It's about teens creating art and teens having had an unusual experience of actually being able to communicate with and be inspired by a full-fledged internationally renowned artist whose work is in back of me. You'll see a little vague rec uh, reflection. I, I don't know which way to turn to get out of the way, but we'll hear more about that in just a moment. <laughs> anyway, Charles Fazzino is at the end of the semicircle here. He is the artist who created this and also who has been working inspirationally with the teens here and with another set that we're going to see in part two. So yeah. tell us about um, how you got to be in this fix, let's call it. <laughs> Well, it, I, uh, back, I guess it goes back to 2005 or six. I uh, was working with the, uh, the Winterfest Boat Parade Committee, and they had asked me to commemorate the boat parade. So I did a, a boat parade artwork for them, and that they used it for advertising and for the official poster. Um, we really worked very well together, and the work was very well received. So um, about a year ago, the uh, Centennial Committee called me in my studios in New York and said we, that they were going to be celebrating 100 years of Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale was uh, incorporated in 1911 and in 2011 was going to be the culmination of this uh, great event that they were going to have and they were asking me to commemorate it. So that's how it sort of all started. Very good. Now, your work, uh, are you want to hold up? Let's, we ought to start right there and you know, sure. get to it because this is, <coughs> explain what this is. We're going to put a little bit forward because when, people, when we say Charles's art, I mean, his art is really known all over the place. I mean, you've done work for celebrities and just all kinds of people, right? I have. It's been keeping me really busy. I've been uh, painting uh, in this style in 3D for 30 years. Wow. And some of my roots actually started here in Fort Lauderdale. After college in New York, I uh, used to come down to Fort Lauderdale and do the outdoor art shows to show my artwork in the uh -huh. wintertime. So uh, some of my first uh, collectors are from this area. So does, does making this kind of thing drive you crazy? It does. Yeah. Because my I'm wife says I have no patience, but I, I don't know. Everybody tells me I got kidding? plenty of patience. <laughs> my goodness. Let's look at this as a close-up, and then we'll get a... I see Stranahan House there. Not Str I don't see Stranahan House. It's the, is it the New River Inn, or is that Stranahan? No, it is Stranahan, Stranahan House. House. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll get a, a quick look, because the camera's on it, and just point to some yeah. things that... Well, you have the Stranahan House. Um, I actually tried to do it um, starting with uh, the early years. So down at the beginning, you see um, the Seminole Indians coming down the New River. And the Stranahan House was known for uh, trading at the time. And actually, in those days, that's all that was in Fort Lauderdale. There was not a lot here, in, especially in that area. And uh, I think it was Frank Stranahan and his wife uh, started uh, a school and, and a trading post. Yeah, exactly. And so I incorporated that down here. And then as, you know, it was so hard to put together a hundred years in one piece of artwork. So I really tried to take specific things that were iconic um, and build it into a dreamscape sort of. So everything sort of mixes and, and goes together uh, going decade by decade. and. Uh, there is everything from uh, Fort Everglades when that um, uh, was one of the big places uh, during the uh, Navy and Air Force and uh, was used and it goes to iconic things like um, the uh, elbow room which was everybody knows worldwide what that is and and that whole story about the strip Just in Fort hold Lauderdale. Forward a little bit? Sure. Okay, okay good. Okay good. And yeah, then right. uh, as it continues, it, it has um, everything from uh, Dillard School to, to Stranahan to Fort Lauderdale High School and everything that was really um, very instrumental in something to do with history. Um, so did that's you have to basically. read a book on Fort Lauderdale or did you, just, did you do a whirling dervish kind of dance or did people <laughs> send you ideas? You can put um, it down now, I think. Yeah, I worked with the committee very closely. Uh -huh. I, I also spent um, a couple of weeks down here. I went to um, uh, the Dillard, uh, uh, talking to people. I went to the African American Museum, um, uh, the library, any place that could get me any information so I can visually put this all into a. Um, How long does it take, beside the research, does it take to create that? Um, well, the original actually is quite large. Um, I started off with a pencil drawing, uh, submitted it to the city to see if they liked, you know, all the different. Um, uh, things and landmarks that I put in and they had a lot of input. The city was um, 
uh, even with all my research, there was a lot of things I forgot. So they were like, you know, how about this and how about that? And I did some more research and, and I came up with visual um, identities for each one of these things because a lot of it was sort of in, in the memories of people and things that didn't actually exist. Super. You can put it down. We'll really, you can put it down now. And we can talk uh, also about now how did you get to the students? Because this now became the experience of a you know, a real artist, well-known right. artist, and your work is in the collections of very well-known people. Yep. Um, I've read it on your website, <laughs> as we do today, easily. Right. And um, so uh, how did you get to have these artists part of your inspiration? Because I'm sure they've inspired you. Well, when I, um, usually what I do when I, I do some of the artwork for the past 11 Super Bowls, I do um, um, artwork for Major League Baseball. And when I go into different cities, um, I usually put on a, um, a, a traveling show. For instance, we bring in my artwork into these different cities that are hosting these huge events. And I usually try to team up with a local school, grassroots organization, to work with local kids to sort of bring them into um, the idea of Super Bowl and get them thinking about football or, or the sport and mixing it with art. A lot of kids um, learn. Um, I was one of them who wasn't the greatest student, but I learned a lot through art and I was good at art. So um, every time I do an event, whether at the Olympics or so forth, I always try to tie in with um, organizations. And it uh, came from my roots when I first started painting. Um, I had uh, worked with muscular dystrophy, which I'm now the vice president of. and. I um, been this is working the National Muscular Dystrophy. The National, yes, yes. Muscular Dystrophy Association. And I felt that um, the kids really took a lot. I used to do um, art projects in the summer camps. They had asked me many years ago to do it, and it really worked out well. So I felt that if the um, disabled kids could do such a great job and really get a lot out of it, I thought, you know, local schools. So they actually, one of my first schools that I did was my, one of my daughter's um, schools up in, uh, in, in New York. And it was very well received, and it sort of just took on a life of its own. Today, it's become the Fizino Arts Initiative, nice. and I'm working with schools. Um, will be working with schools around the world whenever I do more of these projects. We're building it into a program. I see, Nancy Green. That brings me to you. You're an art teacher. Yes. And what Charles just said about the role of art in people's appreciation of life and also of their own talents. I'm guessing maybe a challenge because I was thinking on my way here that one of the first things that gets cut or underappreciated tends to be art uh, and certainly the creative expression. And so tell me the challenges that you face but also the opportunity of having Charles uh, able to interact with students. Oh, absolutely. Well, this was a wonderful experience. Um, I was offered an opportunity to write a grant proposal and uh, I wrote this proposal and I was fortunate enough to receive this uh, grant and jumped at the opportunity because I've been a follower of Charles Fizzino's work for many years. Mm -hmm. I, I knew of his work for a very, very long time. So this was a great marriage for me. And uh, Charles came in and he spoke to the students. It was, you know, this was, it was, it was difficult. He's in New York, we're here. He came in, he talked to the kids, and... Physically came in. Ca physically okay. came down. To, yes. he actually, he came down uh, prior to that, and we met, and we t physically went and looked at the location where we were going to um, put the piece. And then he came back, met with, the, met with all the kids, um, and what I wanted to do was not open it up to just my top kids, but I wanted to have an opportunity for all of my students. So I have beginning kids, um, Middle of the middle of the way kids and uh, advanced kids that that were able to do this work and the reason I wanted to do that is because it's so important funding as you said it's always cut and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have just the best of the best I wanted them you know in in the situation to see that we have kids that I can I can motivate my students and and show Broward County that beginning kids that really struggle, maybe in other areas, I can motivate them and get them to... Sure, who knows where the inspiration is going to go. Exactly. Nobody's full-fledged that and way. And as Charles said, he, he, struggled, he struggled in other subject sure. areas. 
I was a kid that struggled in school and I was fortunate enough to go to the High School of Art and Design in New York City. That was a saving grace for me. Super. It well, opened let's, up great Let's get to the students now and talk about your experience. Did they actually create their individual pieces or collective piece? What happened? Was it in the inspiration? Was it like a Charles Fazzino? Well, what we, how yeah. we started was I mm -hmm. did a drawing and we sort of incorporated their drawings and my drawings. Okay. And that's, uh, so I sort of did like a landscape design and about where things should go and and, then they, and they, really gave them a lot of leeway because I usually if I'm you know mentoring kids in in my area I'm there more hands-on but in I this way you. they had a lot more chance and Nancy just took it from there and had them drawing things and we had an idea of what we were working on and it super. just went from there right. super so where did it take you there you are you said art is opinion did you? I remember that. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot. <laughs> so where did it take you? Tell me, tell me what your experience was. What I really want to get out of it, we've heard from the artist, we've heard from the teacher, but this is Teen Talk, so you've got to now tell us what the experience of working with a successful artist uh, who, who has achieved not only the, the um, personal expression, but also the recognition that comes with that from others. So tell me what your sense was. What did you get out of this? Well, when we first heard about it, it was a very unbelievable experience because most people just go through their lives living their own life, but then they don't realize what they can do can affect other people and that they can leave something behind and that we got this chance to be able to leave something of our very own behind. Well, I hope you don't plan to check out anytime soon, because it's just <laughs> your lives ahead of you. You have long lives ahead of you. I yes, but, I mean, we're yes. being so young, we don't have that chance as a teenager. So being able to do that in high school was just amazing. And I mean, other than marking graffiti on a wall. This is, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's still graffiti, but... Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So that's well. That's a rather, that's a rather un, unusual and extraordinary perspective, I would think. Anybody else want to share what this whole experience was, individually and collectively? Are you ready right. to erupt with a thought? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, like what she said is nice that we could actually leave something for, for behind that um, other people could look at and be like, hey, look what he did. What did you create? What was um, your part? My part, I actually did a little bit of everything from the portraits to the um, individual like buildings and everything. Uh -huh. And then it's just that it feel good knowing that I could come back um, maybe a couple of years from now and be like, hey, you're still here. Mm -hmm. And then it's amazing. You mm -hmm. can see that. Now, you intend to be an artist? No. What do you intend to be? I intend to um, do crime scene investigation. Uh -huh. So <laughs> you have had the experience of art. Mm -hmm. What has that done for you as somebody who may be going into another field? What is that, you know, not everybody's going to be an artist, but people can appreciate the artistic and creative experience. What has that done for you? It, um, it's taught me that looking at one thing, you can look at it from a whole lot of um, different views and um, different standpoints, because you could look at one piece of art and then be like, oh, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, something else could um, make you open your eyes and say, hey, that's actually pretty good. I never looked at it, though. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's, you could say it's life-changing, basically. Really? Life-changing? Yeah. That's a pretty big statement, life-changing. I mean, like what you're saying, you know, very often people go through life with blinders on, but you saw. Anybody else wants to talk about how this affected them? You just shook your head, so that's automatic call. On. <laughs> <laughs> we have to look. Go ahead. <laughs> right, yeah, but it was a unique experience I mean, because not a lot of people get to work with like renowned artists like Charles Fazzino. Mm -hmm. It's like, and it just isn't just giving back to the community. It also helps us too. We can learn how to work together a lot better, and mm -hmm. then we can take things from it. It's like to help us in our own lives. Do you see yourself as an artist, becoming an artist? Are you now an artist? Do you want to, yeah. you know, professionally be an artist? Well, right now I'm in, planning to major in engineering but like more architecture so okay, okay. And design. Super. Yeah, and just being involved in the arts has actually like broadened my views and I feel like I can do more. I can design more from different perspectives. What was the hardest thing about uh, tackling this project? Well, basically it was the scale of it. It's like, it was a large amount of people working on it. Like we're just a small group of everyone who ended up working on it, which is like 
over 50 different students. Really, who orchestrated all that, 50 people? That's, it's wow, cool. you did all that? Yes. Mm. Boy, it must have been 50 people, wow. 54, 54 of the greatest kids. Wow, yeah. that's something. Now, how big is the final piece, or pieces, that they did? It's uh, 14 feet high by 20 feet wide. We're talking wow. big. It's yeah. bigger than this set. Yes. Yeah. And where is it? Where is it? It's uh, permanently installed in the lobby of the auditorium. Oh my God! For of Stranahan High School. Super! Yeah. Wow, that's. And it also includes a mobile hanging in front of it. Huh. So yeah. it's it really is a um, well as you said it's something left behind. Mm -hmm. Who else wants to share the experience of working on this and what you got from art in general? That smile will get you a call done. Okay. <laughs> Um, I learned a lot of different things, like, not, as opposed to just art, we also learned, like you said, to work with each other, and you made new friends, like, I'm a senior, so being a part of this is really good, because I can come back next year and still see, oh, I did that, you know, not many people can say that, even juniors as well, like, who can say that, like, not really, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, had you done anything 